The man who lived in this beautiful home in Santa Rosa, California, was once honored on a U.S. postage stamp. That's right, Luther Burbank, a nationally known figure responsible for creating many new variety of plants. He is credited with introducing more than 250 new varieties of fruit, including a large number of plum varieties that are widely used in agriculture. Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. This is where he spent his final years. He did a lot of his horticulture experimentation on the acres here, now in City Park. We thought we'd take you around and show you a little bit about Luther Burbank's creations. Here at the entrance to Luther Burbank's home and garden are a number of plaques. This one was posted by his Masonic brethren in 1961, and this one was posted by the Santa Rosa Chamber of Commerce. Luther Burbank lived from 1849 to 1926 and was widely acclaimed to be America's most famous horticulturalist and plant breeder. At one time, he was one of the most famous Americans. Luther Burbank was born in Lancaster, Massachusetts as the 13th of 15 children. He grew up on a farm where he enjoyed the plants in his mother's garden. He received only a high school education. His father died when Luther was 18, and he used his inheritance to buy 17 acres, where he experimented and came up with a Burbank potato. He sold the rights to the potato for a mere $150 and used the money to travel to Santa Rosa in 1875. Later, he developed the Russell Burbank potato, perhaps the most widely used potato in the United States. Next time you enjoy your McDonald's fries, you can thank Mr. Burbank. Here at this four-acre experimental garden, Burbank set up a greenhouse, nursery, and experimental fields where he crossbred plants inspired by Charles Darwin's The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication. Burbank became known through his plant catalogs and through word of mouth of satisfied customers, as well as press reports that kept him in the news throughout the first decade of the century. His notoriety prompted a number of celebrities to visit his farm. In October 1915, Henry Ford and Thomas Edison dropped by to tour the farm. Henry Lauder, the famous singer and performer with his trademark Scottish brogue, visited Burbank around 1920. In 1925, a year before he died, Helen Keller came by and the two posed for a photo with Burbank as she held on to some of his Shasta daisies. Famed author Jack London, who lived in nearby Glen Ellen, dropped by for at least two visits, once in 1896 or 1897, and the last time in 1910. This is the back side of his house. And there is Mr. Burbank's mailbox. I'm sure it's not the original. So let's go around here and see if we can take a peek inside the back door to the kitchen. That really might resemble something that your great great grandmother had. So over here are some beautiful marigolds, which Burbank also had experimented with. And something over here I wanna show you. It's a large Japanese maple right outside the back door, which appears to be quite old. I know that they can live to be a hundred or so years. So who knows, maybe Burbank planted it. Let's go around to the front of the house. Let's peek inside this window. Check out that old glassware inside the kitchen window. No doubt it belonged to Mrs. Burbank, who was a lot younger than him and lived in this house until she died in 1977. These old houses with their ornamental scrolling are pretty fascinating to look at. This porch kind of reminds me of the Eisenhower family home in Abilene, Kansas. You don't see this today. The light fixture looks original and so does the mailbox. It looks like that brickwork was made to create some drainage when the water gets on the porch. Luther Burbank lived in this house from 1884 to 1906 when he had a, another house built across Tipper Street. And after he died in 1926 in that house, his widow Elizabeth moved back to this house where she remained until she died in 1977. I was in high school then. The other house, sad to say, was leveled and would have been right over here in this direction near the brick monument. And check out the hummingbird there, buzzing around, that's pretty cool. Mr. Burbank would love to see this place being taken care of. Do you see it says, please don't stick your noses in our roses. This is his carriage house. In other words, his garage back in the day when they had carriages. 
he would store his carriage right here. It's now the house and museum. Of course, it's not open because what's going on right now in this country is this. Oh, wow. This walnut tree was actually planted by Mr. Burbank in 1914. Now, I understand that the carriage house caught on fire in 1938 and it damaged this tree. It's actually a subsprout from the original trunk. Mr. Burbank thought he was going to use cactus to help feed the world. It turned out it wasn't quite the delicacy that he thought it would be. So this last work here displays all kinds of photos. This one showing how he married Elizabeth Waters in 1916. Now this is hard to believe, but he was 67 years old and she was 28. Talk about robbing the cradle. This photo here shows Burbank visiting with Henry Ford and Thomas Edison, some names you may have heard, right here at his home in 1915. Now I think I'm gonna to try to find those steps that they're sitting on. So here's his home on Tupper Street in 1906. I understand it's been removed. So this is a photo of the same home that's here on the property in 1884. I think that's his mother on the porch with Luther himself. The Burbank house is actually closed off, but these photos here kind of give you a glimpse of what the inside of it looked like. Keep in mind that Mrs. Burbank lived here until her death in 1977. I understand she was cremated and her ashes are buried on the property along with Luther Burbank. It's also said that their family dog, Bonita, is also buried among them. Luther Burbank was known to be the plant wizard. He helped create the Alberta peach, the Santa Rosa plum, and he also invented the russet potato, the brown potato that virtually feeds the whole world now. He was kind of faulted by scientists, however, for not keeping scientific records of his hybrid plants. This quaint little structure here was added to the carriage house sometime in the 1930s, and it is referred to as a seed house because Luther Burbank sold seeds here to the public through the sliding window. It's now used as storage space. Over here you can see the home and the carriage house and the courtyard. But I do believe that they added all this brickwork later. Extensive amount of brickwork. Imagine over a century ago these same buildings were used by Burbank himself. That's pretty cool. This greenhouse is locked up but check out what looks to be a safe with his name written on it. He worked in this greenhouse and he allowed others to come in and take a look at his experimentations. At one time, this house was allowed to be completely covered in ivy and it happened to be that way in 1915 when Thomas Edison came calling and he posed with Burbank right here on this sidewalk. Now, back in the 1880s, the entrance to this house was directly in front of the door as seen in this picture here. Later, the foot traffic was directed off to the side and they put up a railing here. I just love how it looks. It's a cool house. If I'm not mistaken, these are the same steps here that Thomas Edison and Henry Ford took that picture with Luther Burbank right here on the front porch of his house. So I just found out that the Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, and Luther Burbank photo sitting on the steps was taken at the newer house across the street, the one that's not there anymore. Mr. Burbank remained active until the very end of his life, but his age and frailty were pretty apparent. On February 4th, 1926, he appeared at the Congregational Church in San Francisco and gave his famous I Love Everybody speech. A month later, on March 7th, a large crowd gathered on this property to help him celebrate his 77th birthday with a cake. In a matter of weeks, he would suffer a serious heart attack, and on April 11th, 1926, he didn't wake up from his sleep. The instructions that Luther Burbank gave after his burial was that he wanted to be buried here on the property under this giant cypress tree so that the remains of his life could give life to a tree. That tree has since fallen. I spent some time searching for the grave of Luther Burbank and later learned that I was close to it here. Between the house and the street was a large cypress tree where he wanted to be buried. It was at this favorite tree where he had posed with Helen Keller in 1925. This photo was taken by officials shortly after his funeral and burial here at this spot. There were a number of people who would come by and pose and remember. So somewhere in this area are the remains of Luther Burbank 
his wife Elizabeth, and the family dog Bonita. Apparently he didn't want any kind of memorial marker. So it looks like right here they're doing some experimental growing of plums. Burbank was known for growing plums. Pretty sure that that scarecrow right there is not something that he left in place. One of his outstanding accomplishments was the development of an entirely new species of daisies, which he called the Shasta daisy, after Mount Shasta, by breeding and selecting. So his quadruple hybrid started with the wild ox eye daisy, and he crossed it with two European daisies. And the result was that he increased the size and beauty of the flower. After 17 years of experimentation, he introduced the first Shasta daisy varieties. So you can thank Luther Burbank and God for these beautiful flowers. So in the gardens of Luther Burbank, I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. We always love teaching about history and showing you historical places in the United States. We would appreciate a thumbs up, maybe a comment. We'd always appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Thanks so much for joining us today. Beautiful, beautiful place.